The Environmental Protection Agency has released its proposed renewable fuel volumes for 2017. The agency put out final requirements for 2014, 2015, and 2016 late last year. For 2017, the EPA is aiming for renewable fuel standard volumes of 2 billion gallons of biodiesel, 312 million gallons of cellulosic ethanol, and a resulting 14.8 billion gallons of corn ethanol. Overall, the RFS total would be 18.8 billion gallons, far below the original goal of 24 billion set in 2007. However, the amount of ethanol derived from corn in 2017 wouldn't be too far from the original requirement. Todd Neely covers policy and renewable fuels for DTN. We talked with him earlier this week and began by asking how close the 2017 proposals were to expectations. I think if you talk to, to the people in the industry, they'll say this isn't good enough. It's kind of an ongoing mantra in the past few years. Um, EPA has been very, uh, very slow in the way that they implement the law. They've been uh, oftentimes two to three years behind. I think we're seeing them catch up now. But uh, when you look at what came out, I think it's, uh, you know, it's relatively positive considering uh, where this industry has been. How's the blend wall impacting the targets for corn-based ethanol? Well, you know, I think we're seeing that move a little bit. Uh, this proposal that's come out, uh, it's going to be within a couple hundred million gallons of what uh, corn ethanol is originally supposed to be at at this point. And so I think when you look at the numbers and you, and you hear a little bit of the industry talk about it, this is probably going to get us through the blend wall. Of course, when you add cellulosic ethanol and some of these other things in, uh, there's going to have to be room for it. And so the only way to do that is to get through the blend wall. What helps you get past that blend wall? Is it the exports? Is it using higher blends? I think at this point it's a little of both. You know, we've seen a very slow growth in E15. Uh, I think we're going to continue to see that. It's kind of a grassroots effort that the industry is putting on itself. They're not getting a lot of help from EPA. Uh, but I think as you go forward, I think uh, we're going to see some exports pick up. I mean, there's always that export market. Um, you know, we've seen the industry go on a variety of, uh, of uh, trade missions in recent months. And I think some of those are going to end up uh, turning out some good, some good results. If you look at that original target, like you mentioned, of mm -hmm. 15 and at 14.8 now, there's a chance that for the 2018 mandates, they could get there, right? Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, the way we've seen with this industry, it tends to at times overproduce. Um, obviously, the margins have been tight lately, so it's, uh, it's kind of a question as to whether it's even worth it at times. But I think right now, the way things are going, the, the margins are slowly improving. We're seeing some, some movement there. Uh, and I fully expect we'll see that uh, they'll meet those targets and maybe even go a bit above. What's the state of the cellulosic industry right now? Well, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a drama. We've seen it in the past 10 years. It's just been an up and down. Uh, this latest RFS proposal, it does uh, provide some growth at about uh, roughly 82 million gallons more than the previous year. Uh, but we've seen uh, the company Abengoa based in Spain, you know, they're going through bankruptcy right now. Uh, their plant in uh, Hugoton, Kansas isn't producing and probably won't be for the foreseeable future. Uh, so meeting the target on cellulosic ethanol, I think at 312 million gallons is quite a stretch, but I think there are enough uh, smaller companies out there producing gallons that can add to it. What has been the hindrance to that industry? It's been a lot of things. You know, we had the economic slowdown uh, back in 08. Uh, we've seen a lot of these companies, they've really struggled to get what they call through this valley of death. Uh, where a company is looking for the, the necessary funds uh, to get over the technology hump. Um, we've seen that happen. I mean, they've, they've overcome a lot of those challenges, but now it's really getting this thing up to commercial scale, getting enough investors and getting enough interest, and then, you know, having a more robust RFS. What kind of position is biodiesel in after these proposals? Uh, it's, it's disappointing. Uh, you know, the industry itself is saying that it's on track in the next couple of years to produce two, two and a half billion gallons. Uh, this proposal only gets it up to about 2.1. And so I think there's still going to be some wrangling going on with that. Uh, you know, the biodiesel industry also is involved in a lawsuit challenging EPA on, on the RFS. And so I think that uh, a lot of people are waiting to see how that lawsuit plays out. That's what's really going to determine what's going to happen, I think. Can you explain the value of biodiesel in terms of um, it filling that advanced biofuel uh, category of the mandate? Yeah, right now it is considered to be the only commercially viable uh, advanced biofuel. Uh, that's because it's produced uh, using a lot of biomass materials as well. And so that's one of the things that the industry brags about. You know, you hear a lot about these next generation, 
you know, these drop-in fuels like biobutanol and all these things kind of kind of being bragged about. But uh, this industry does have that on its side. It's in the RFS that it has a place in the RFS that a lot of current commercially produced fuels don't. Describe the funding proposals from the USDA or the funding from the USDA that could help that industry. Well, yeah, we saw another round of funding come out. It's not a big total. It's about $8 million from USDA and a special program that they provide. Uh, more than half of the recipients in that program were biodiesel uh, companies or companies that are thinking about getting into it a little bit. And, you know, every little bit helps. I think every time you see uh, another award like this comes out, it really does make a big, it, it makes a bigger difference than what a lot of people will suggest. Recap for me, you mentioned it, but the uh, positions from both sides on uh, this proposal, where they stand? Well, I think if you talk to, uh, it depends on the group you talk to. I know Growth Energy, one of the ethanol groups in D.C., um, when the last proposal came out, they were they were somewhat uh, excited by it. Um, but I think overall, people by and large are still greatly disappointed. Um, you know, and unfortunately, it really is going to come down to a court case. I think if uh, the court in D.C. takes this takes this case as far as it goes, I think what we're going to end up seeing is we're going to see that EPA probably hasn't done what it should. Now, whether that you know results in you know the industry getting what it wants is a whole other story. When you say hasn't done what it should, does that mean not living up to what was originally set? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think that's you know without that robust RFS and, and the numbers that were set forth years ago, um, you know, it's really it's really difficult to say what's going to happen to the industry. The comment period for this proposal runs through July 11th. On the Market Journal website, we'll link to more information about potential volumes and submitting comments.